The situation in the Middle East is an absolute cluster. I mean, it's, it's just a disaster. And generally, reporters won't say it, but I will. Much of this would never have happened if George W. Bush had not lied us into a war and taken out Saddam Hussein. Iraq was the center of stability in the Middle East. And the whole theory of the neocon warlords in the Bush administration, the, the uh, Wolfowitzes and Rumsfelds and Cheneys of the world, the ones who believe that, if, that, that, that economics is every bit as, you know, in our genes as democracy. You know, humans are naturally democratic, instinctively democratic animals, small d democratic. And, uh, you know, the conservative theology is that we're also money hoarders by instinct. And maybe food hoarders, who knows? I shared in the last hour my, my theory about uh, building on Dan Quinn's stuff and on stuff that I've written about in, in my books, Last Hours of Ancient Sunlight, and in my book, Threshold, that European culture, and maybe there's something to the genetics of this as well, but I, I suspect it's cultural. European culture evolved, because cultures evolved too. European culture evolved in the face of food shortages. Because in Europe, there are winters. And winter produces a period of very little food. And so somebody figured out that if they grew a lot of food during the summer and then locked it up after it was harvested, people would give them all kinds of things in exchange for that food. Oh, yes, here's some money. Here's, here's uh, you know, uh, <laughs> take my kids. I mean, take it to whatever. I mean, people would just, like, give up stuff in exchange for access to that food and, and all the things that went with the food. And thus came kings and kingdoms and lords and ladies and, uh, you know, this, this whole European hierarchy of, of the astonishingly rich at the top, the ones who locked up most of the food, and the working poor at the very bottom, the serfs. It was called feudalism. And nothing like that happened in... in uh, to the best of my knowledge, I mean, there are probably variations on it, but nothing as institutional, continent-wide, really solid, you know, uh, to the point where all the royal families of Europe were interbreeding with each other because they didn't want to bring in the commoners because, after all, you know, God chose them to be the, the, the wealthy ones. And so is this, is this the fatal flaw that has caused white people to be predatory wherever they've gone around the world? basically over the last couple thousand years, the last 3,000 years. As white people have spread around the world and enslaved people and, and locked up the food. In fact, here in the United States, they've locked up the food so well that we've got in many African-American neighborhoods what are referred to as food deserts. Places where you cannot find fresh fruit and vegetables. All you can find are processed foods. And now we're seeing these studies that processed foods contain emulsifiers, so that the, uh, you know, without an emulsifier, the, that white stuff in a Twinkie would turn into water with thick white goo on the top. So the emulsifier mix it all together. But emulsifiers, when they get in our intestinal tract, appear to mess with our gut bacteria, which is necessary for us to absorb nutrients. And so you see this epidemic of literally malnutrition. And one of the principal symptoms of that malnutrition is being overweight happening in, in poor poor, largely African-American communities in the United States because there's no food that's worth eating. And then kids grow up eating a terrible diet and it becomes their habit as, as an adult and they end up dying of heart attacks and, and strokes and cancer and, and uh, you know, high blood pressure and you, you name it, much earlier than, than white people by and large. But could it be that this... This, this way of thinking about culture, of, of, uh, of thinking about possessions that I believe came along with the agricultural revolution in the north, in the northern part of Europe. Could it be that that thinking is one of the main things that's driving this whole, you know, uh, not just the whole white privilege thing, but the whole, you know, cops behaving badly, white cops behaving badly thing. And if so, what do we do about that? Well, if, if I'm right, 
then that would argue that we need to stop the people who would lock up the food from locking up the food. And we need to make that food available to people who didn't have the land to grow it on, you know, who, who, who didn't in, inherit an oil company from their daddy, basically. And how do you do that? Well, you, you start out by raising the minimum wage to a living wage all across the country. You could start out by, by some form of reparations, exactly what those should be and, and what form they should take. I mean, there's some very, very good thinking on this and some very good books on this. We could go back to some of the things that worked so well out of the great society. Peter program or whether it was, you know, uh, access to schools, colleges, and things like that. And we could stop this, this uh, 25-year-long Republican experiment of destroying public education in the United States to create space for private, for-profit charter schools and just say, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to fund public education, particularly in poor neighborhoods. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-536-2370. Poor neighborhoods don't just appear out of nowhere. People are made poor and kept poor. It's the system.